I bet you can tell a lot about these two objects just by looking at them. How they will perform, what they might do, and whether you like them or not. As designers or people who develop products, it's really important to articulate why we have certain emotional responses to design so that we can apply it to our own practice. Today, we'll be looking at HTC Vive's headset and controllers. Vive is a virtual reality headset. Just so you have some context, you put these goggles on and you're immersed in a three-dimensional world. You can walk through the world and you can use these controllers to manipulate things inside of that simulated world. The most common application for this technology right now is for gaming, but really the possibilities are kind of endless. Let's get started on the design breakdown. Take a few seconds to look and think of three to five words that you think best describe this piece of equipment. Let me know what words you associate with this design in the comments. I understand that we all come from different cultural backgrounds and we all have different life experiences. So I'm curious to see what common threads start to pop up. So here's what I see. I see technical, performance, and futuristic. Just by looking at the silhouette of the headset, I can see that there are clearly a lot of moving parts, connection points, and places for adjustability. All of these features make the design look more technical. Performance equipment tends to prioritize function, like Formula One race cars or heavy machinery. Exposing these functional features makes the design of Vive seem more like a piece of professional equipment and less like a consumer product. An iconic element of the silhouette is the area right here that kind of cradles the back of the head. I see a lot of holes and spaces here, which communicates performance. Usually when you need performance in an object, you take away as much material as possible to make it more lightweight. What you end up with is a reduced frame that's still structural. This can be seen in nature with things like bird's bones or cell structures, or even in man-made objects like a bicycle frame, for example. You can see this design language passed on to the controllers as well. I actually really think that the controllers are the coolest part of this design. The designers and engineers needed these sensors facing almost 360 degrees in every direction. So they hollowed out the centerpiece of the controller, mimicking all of the holes found in the rest of the design. So for the general proportions and silhouette, I'm getting technical and performance. Let's see what else we can kind of figure out when we dive into the subshapes and some of the details. The first thing I notice is these little dots placed all over the device. So each of these dots are actually sensors so that the device can track where you're looking around in space. This was most likely an engineering driven decision, but either way, there are things that the designers could have done to call less attention to these sensors. It seems like the designers chose to feature them rather than hide them though. This definitely adds to the technical aspect of the design and also to the futuristic feeling. By literally encircling each sensor with a giant offset elliptical ring, the surface catches more light and calls a lot of visual attention to them. These sensors contribute very much to the sci-fi or almost alien look of the design. It makes it clear that this is not just an everyday object. This is an object from the future that utilizes very advanced tech. Another thing that makes it look very sophisticated and futuristic is the use of these continuously curved surfaces. The entire front part of the headset is made up almost entirely of curved forms with almost no straight lines anywhere. These smooth transitional surfaces give the design just enough refinement and elegance to balance out the technical and performance oriented aspects of the design. Contrast this with the Oculus Rift. Notice how this looks much more like a consumer grade piece of equipment, whereas Vive looks like something out of the matrix or something. Oculus is made up of simple elemental shapes it's a much more approachable design. When you look at Oculus, you might make the subconscious judgment that it's easier to use because it's visually more simple. There's less detail. Vive, on the other hand, has a lot of exposed wires and functional details, which make it look like something geared towards performance. Neither strategy is necessarily better or worse, although the Vive's aesthetic is definitely a lot more polarizing, which is one of the reasons why I'm reviewing it you're more likely to either love it or hate it. This technology is in its early stages, right? Now, the functional components here are pretty big and bulky. HTC Vive obviously knew this and they figured, you know what? Rather than try and hide this and make this look smaller, let's just accept the fact that it's kind of big and bulky and make it look super technical and professional and performance oriented instead. 
Honestly, it could have been a lot worse. Moving on to the controller, we see that they made this little spacey flying saucer shape. The torus shape along the top probably ensures much better tracking and exposure for all the sensors. They also probably hollowed out the center to reduce swing weight as you move the controllers around. I think the reason why I like this controller so much is because the concentric circles create a lot of visual interest without being overly busy. It kind of naturally leads your eye around the object in a very organized and logical way. And another really nice thing about this controller is that it feels really substantial. Because you're holding a controller with a lot of heft, it makes it much more believable when you hold something in virtual reality in a game like a sword or a bow and arrow or whatever else. The materials are pretty much all satin black. And once again, the satin finish makes it look like a technical piece of equipment, almost like a digital SLR or even a stealth fighter jet. The lighter gray accents provide a little bit of extra contrast to highlight major touch points or areas for adjustment. You'll also notice that on the gray buttons, there are these little lines that kind of give your fingers an indication for where to press. Another nice thing that I really like is this sort of bumpy texture that's on the rubberized part which catches the light nicely and diffuses it, but more importantly, it gives your hand a little bit of a better grip. Almost all of the details of this design are functional. The designers probably didn't want to highlight all of these functional details because they wanted to avoid creating too much visual clutter. This design already has a lot going on, so bringing further attention to these small features would probably have just bogged things down. With that said, there are some really nice details such as the air vent along the top of the face mask, which has a functional purpose of improving airflow when wearing the device, keeping the wear from getting too hot, and also keeping the lenses inside from fogging up. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I really, really appreciate it. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe. If there are other products that you'd like me to analyze, leave it in the comments, and I hope to see you tuning in again soon.